everyone welcome back to fuzzy logic lectures in the last video we looked into what the sugino method is and we solved an example based on this concept in this lecture we'll be learning what the sukumoto method is and we'll be solving an example based on this and we'll look at few advantages and disadvantages associated with this method so let's get started <laughs> From our previous lectures, we have studied about the other two graphical techniques of inferences, which was the Mamdani model and the Sugino model. In the case of Mamdani systems, our two antecedents were fuzzy sets of fuzzy numbers, and our consequent was also a fuzzy set. However, in the case of the Sugino systems, even though our two antecedents are fuzzy sets, our consequent, on the other hand, was a function of the inputs. as specified by the antecedent in the rules however in the case of the sukumoto model as you can see here our antecedents are fuzzy sets or fuzzy numbers and our consequent is also a fuzzy set but the only difference over here is that the membership function of the consequent fuzzy set will be a monotonic function that is the consequent of each fuzzy rule is represented by a fuzzy set that is having a monotonic membership function now monotonic function also called as a shoulder function is the one whose successive values are increasing decreasing or constant for example as you can see here we have two graphs over here the function is increasing and then it is constant similarly in this graph we can see that it is constant and then it is decreasing so over here as you can see these functions they represent a form of a shoulder type of a figure and hence it is also called as a shoulder function so this is what a monotonic function is and in the case of sukumoto system our fuzzy set b will be having a monotonic membership function so in a monotonic membership function the inferred output of each rule is defined as a crisp value induced by the membership value coming from the antecedent of the rule now i understand that this statement might be a little complex for you to grasp so i'll explain it with the help of a graph as you can see here we have two rules we have rule 1 and rule 2 rule 1 is given as if x1 is a11 and x2 is a21 then y1 is b1 and rule 2 is given as if x1 is a12 and x2 is a22 then y2 is b2 here x1 and x2 are the inputs and y1 is the output and again over here x1 and x2 are the inputs and y2 is the output for the case of rule 2 and here a11 a21 b1 a12 a22 and b2 are all fuzzy sets and they are represented in these figures as you can see here mu over here represents the membership value and wx1 is a corresponding membership value for x1 W X two is the corresponding membership value for X two, and W Y one is the corresponding membership value for Y one, and same is the case for W Y two. This is the corresponding membership value for Y two. So as you can see here, first we found out the corresponding membership value for all the inputs for both rule one and rule two, and then we found out the membership value for the output Y one, and this is done by either using minimum or maximum depending upon the rule. So in this case since both the rules are connected by the and operator i have taken the minimum of wx1 and wx2 in the case of rule 1 and the minimum of wx1 and wx2 in the case of rule 2 because both rule 1 and rule 2 are connected by the and operator and this is how we obtain wy1 and wy2 and after obtaining wy1 and wy2 we can find out the corresponding crisp values y1 and y2 that is if we extend wy1 onto the graph we will get y1 and if we extend wy2 onto the graph we can get the crisp output y2 and that is what i've meant by the above statement that is the inferred output of each rule is defined as a crisp value which is y1 in this case and y2 in this case and this is induced by a membership value which is wy1 and wy2 that is coming from the antecedent of the rule and after this we obtain our overall output which will be calculated by the weighted average of each rule's output that is the weighted average of y1 and y2 as that is the overall output y star will be given as wy1 into y1 
plus W Y2 into Y2 divided by W Y1 plus W Y2. Where W Y1 and W Y2 are the corresponding membership functions of Y1 and Y2. So this is how you solve using the Sukumoto method. Let's take a solved example so that you can understand this concept better. Here in this question, we have been provided with two rules. Rule 1 is given as if x1 is a1 and x2 is b1, then y1 is c1. And rule 2 is given as if x1 is a2 or x2 is b2, then y2 is c2. We have also been provided with the inputs of x1 and x2 as 2 and 5 respectively. And we have also been provided with the graphs of the fuzzy sets a1, b1, c1 and a2, b2 and c2 where mu represents the membership value. And as you can see here, the membership functions of our consequent graphs are all monotonic membership functions. So what we need to do first is that we have to find out the corresponding membership values for x1 and x2. That is first we'll do for x1 in the case of rule 1. So first we'll take 2 and then we need to find out the corresponding membership value. So let us extend 2 and we'll get it as 0 0.2. Therefore our corresponding membership value for 2 will be 0 0.2. Similarly, we have to find out the corresponding membership value for 5. So first we take 5 and when we extend it, we will get it as 0.6. Therefore, the corresponding membership value for 5 will be 0.6. Now that we found out the membership values of x1 and x2, we need to find out the membership value of y1 which is wy1. And to do that, we have to take the minimum of the membership values of x1 and x2 because as we have studied in our previous lecture, whenever the rules are connected by the AND operator, we have to take the minimum of the membership values of x1 and x2. And since rule 1 is connected by the AND operator, we have to take the minimum of 0.2 and 0.6 which is 0.2. So when we extend 0.2, we will get it as this. That is our WY1, that is our corresponding membership value of Y1 will be 0.2. And when we extend it down, we'll get a crisp output y1. So we'll extend this down and we'll get this point that is 0.5. That is our value y1 or our crisp output y1 will be 0.5 in the case of rule 1. Similarly, we should do for rule 2. That is first we'll find out the corresponding membership value for x1 which is 2. So again, we'll extend 2 and the corresponding membership value will be 0.1. That is Wx1 will be 0.1 when x1 is equal to 2. Similarly, we'll do for x2 which is equal to 5. That is we have to find out the corresponding membership value for 5. And when we extend this, we'll get it as 0.5. That is the corresponding membership value for x2 is equal to 5 will be 0.5 in the case of rule 2. Now we need to find out the membership function for our crisp output y2. And to do that, we have to consider the maximum of the membership functions of x1 and x2 because in the case of rule 2, we are using the OR connective. And whenever we use the OR connective, we have to consider the maximum of the membership values of x1 and x2. So here, the maximum of 0.1 and 0.5 will be 0.5. And when we extend 0.5 onto our output graph, we will get a crisp output y2. That is when we extend 0.5, we will get it as 5. Therefore, our crisp output y2 in the case of rule 2 will be 5. Now that we have obtained wy1 and wy2 and we have obtained the crisp outputs y1 and y2, we can apply the weighted average defalsification method to find y star or the overall output. So we have y star will be equal to wy1 into y1 plus wy2 into y2 and this entire thing divided by wy1 plus wy2. Now let's substitute the values for wy1, y1, wy2 and y2. Here wy1 is 0.2, y1 is 0.5, wy2 is 0.5 and y2 will be 5. So we have this equal to wy1 which is 0 
into 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 into 5 and this entire thing divided by 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5 and this will be equal to 3.714 or we can approximately say Y star or our overall output which is equal to 3.71. So this is how you solve with the Sukumoto method. Now there are few advantages and disadvantages to the Sukumoto model. The advantage is that it avoids a time consuming process of defalsification since each rule infers a crisp output and the overall output can be calculated using the weighted average method. But the disadvantage in this case is that since the output membership function in the case of the Sukumoto model should be monotonic in nature. It is not very useful as a general approach and therefore can only be used in specific situations. I hope the concepts that were taught in this lecture were clear to all of you. If anyone has any doubts, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Either we or another viewer will surely help you out. If you found this video to be useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next lecture, we will be solving an example in which all the three methods can be applied. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.